Hi crafty friend, it's me Justine Dvorak over here on Stationery by Justine. So today I'm going to demo this scan and cut. I am demoing the scan and cut that I own. I've owned this for a few years. It's the CM350 and it is quite a workhorse and it works so well for die cutting. So shall we get right into what I'm going to be die cutting out? I have some new goodies from Pajama Crafter Stamps, which I love. So I went ahead and stamped out some lovelies right here. We'll get into that in just a minute. But I used the Pajama Crafter Stamps paper. It is heavyweight cardstock and it's good for alcohol markers, which I plan to use alcohol markers to color these beautiful stamps up when I am finished. But shall I show you the stamps that I used? I will put a timestamp in this video, so if you are just here for the scanning cut, you can skip ahead. But if you are here for it all, here you are. <laughs> all right, I have a few stamp sets that I have that are older. They came out within the last year, so to me it's not too old. But I pulled out this flower. I'm going to make a card with this floral area in the background. So I wanted to have a little extra flowers, so that I have that there. And then I have this set, which just came out this year in October, so very recently. And this is the pumpkin head, and I stamped out an extra one. I've made several cards with the pumpkin head already, but I think it's super fun, so why not do another one? Now, there's four new stamp sets for this month. I'm going to put this down so I can show you. But there is this one, which is so delightful, kind of a pop theme. There's this one that is called Tea and Coffee Time. I love the teacup and this uh, tea bag. Then we have one called Game Night, which if you know me, you, like, you know that I like bingo. So I was all excited about the bingo and I do enjoy playing cards. So those were fun. This one is called Gamers Gonna Game. So it is kind of a video game theme, which is kind of fun. So I have it, you can see, stamped them all out. I use Versamark ink. It is Copic friendly. So I'm going to just sneak this over for just a second and we'll get into how I set up my mat. So this is the mat that comes with my machine. You can buy replaceables. I've had two of these over the years. You can kind of see in the light there that I have some of the blade that has cut into the mat and it's not a big deal. These come super, super sticky, but since I am kind of cheap, <laughs> I don't really replace it very often. So you can see some paper is stuck on there, whatever, not even a big deal. I will typically just use some craft tape when I am using my skin and cut. So how I do that, let's just demo it all. On a paper, it looks like I can fit, can I fit both of these? No. Well, we're gonna do it twice. <laughs> it does not matter where this goes. I could even put it crooked, it does not matter. It will scan amazingly and it will be great. So that, if I just stuck it on right here and if this was a new back sheet, it would stick. But because I have an old sheet here and I like to kind of get the most bang for my buck, I'm not replacing it. So I do kind of smooth it down just to make sure it's nice and smooth, but I will be adding my craft tape. Now this is the yellow tape from Spellbinders. Best ever craft tape. So I'm gonna put all four corners down like these. Sometimes if it's kind of an odd shape, I will do more tape, but I feel like that's going to be good enough. So let's get into the nuts and bolts, if you will, of my machine. I'm just going to tilt this ever so slightly so you can see my blade. This comes out. You have to pop that up. This comes out. I keep mine set around three. So if you have a thicker paper, you can always go a little bit more and you can actually see the blade sticking out there on the very tip. Can you see that? So 
depending on how you like it. I, I think three is fine for the material I'm using. It's just some really nice cardstock, so it does not need to be like crazy, crazy thick with my cutting blade. Okay, well, I'm gonna get this into position. I do like that it has this door because it keeps the dust out of the important areas. There's definitely some dust on my screen, but ignore that. So make sure it's plugged in and then hit the start button. <laughs> it's always like one thing I sometimes forget. Wait, how's this not working? Uh, turn it on. Okay, <laughs> and then they have this lovely touch screen. You can go higher, lower, depending on how you want it to be viewed. I typically just keep it flat. I'm gonna use the little kickstand just a little bit here for the video and just go up one notch so you can see the screen without any glare from my window. So it has kind of a fun little screen saver there. Now I'm just demoing how I cut out my stamps. There is tons of stuff you can do with, with the scan and cut, but this is what I am doing and I'm doing this video because I was asked to by a subscriber. So this is for you if you're interested in knowing how I cut these out with the scan and cut. By the way, this is going to save you a whole bunch of money because you don't need to buy all these coordinating dies to cut out all the stamps. And then that also saves you room in your craft room to have a cutting machine instead of a whole bunch of dies. Plus dies are more expensive than stamps. So in the long run, it will save you a little bit of Del Rey me. Shall we begin? Well, I am going to insert my mat. Again, it does not matter if you put it in this way with the brother logo there, or if you flip it around and put it in here because it has these little codes that it reads, that the machine reads. So I'm just going to set it in right here and it just is going to rest there for just a minute. Then I'm going to use this button right here that is kind of the load unload button. Not an official name, but that's what I call it. So I'll just hit that once. And I just kind of let that load in. So now it is lined up and I'm going to click scan because I'm not working from a pattern that the machine already has. So to me, I always do kind of the same steps here. So I'm also going to use my phone flashlight. If you have a dark space, it can help to add extra light around. Now on this side, I have a huge window and lights coming from it. But because I'm filming this video, I'm standing right here and behind me is a giant window which would be letting in a whole bunch of light. So when I start, I'm going to move over. You can already see my shadow is creating quite a lot of shade there. So I'm going to move it over and then pop my phone right here. So the screen that is scanning can actually see everything with the brightest light possible. So hit scan and then I'm going to click direct cut because I want this to be cut. I don't need it to save this because I've stamped these out in random places. I don't need to save that for later. And then I'm going to select the device. I don't have any other device except this one. So I'm going to click the picture that looks like the machine. And then the green start and stop button will light up. This is just saying that it's ready to go. So I'm going to hit start to stop and then I'm going to move over and put the light there. Ready? And this is just scanning it. So now that it has scanned, it will just take a second to recognize the image that it has just scanned. Not really a minute, but you know, and then I will click OK because yes, that is exactly what I sent through. Now, if you look here, I'm going to use two screens, so I might be bopping in between here. So it might be a little bit shaky. I'm using my phone camera now. So everything that has been a stamp outline, you can see that's a deck of cards. It has a line around that. That means it's going to cut around there. I don't think I have any images here. I'm gonna click the plus sign so I can zoom in. 
and then I can scroll down. I don't think I have any images where it's going to cut where I don't want it to cut, which is fabulous. Sometimes, for example, for the pop cans, this is a very big blank area, but because it is outlined with the stamp, it will cut around there, so that's great. What I'm going to do is just move these little arrows over and make my selected area a little bit smaller because I don't like it to cut on any of my little scrap bits and bobs from maybe if there's a little piece of like paper right there it might scan that and then try to cut around that i don't want it to even bother so i'm going to just move that over as much as possible so it's framed then i have this lovely just gorgeous <laughs> note to myself use number four that is to remind myself to change this setting. So this setting tells how much of a border it's going to leave. So whenever I'm cutting, my machine automatically is set to cut right on the line. So it's going to cut on this outside black line. When I have stamped images, sometimes I want a little bit of a white border, which to me looks really good. I like that. So I'm gonna click the plus button and that is just going to go to the four. So that's what that four is talking about. And I will just check my image again, make sure that nothing is touching. For example, if these two bingo boards were stamped closer together and I made the outline a little bit bigger, it would basically die cut these out in one image. So I definitely want to be mindful about how it is going to cut. Then I will just click okay, that brings me back. Now it's set to that four. I do not monkey around with any of the other settings, but yeah, we'll just leave it at that. And then I'll hit okay. I do have my windows open because it is a gorgeous day in Minnesota. So you might hear some things outside. I'll just check my image again. That looks great. I'm going to select cut. You can go ahead and take the blade out of this and then you can pop in a marker. I have never done that but apparently you can do it but we're cutting today so I'll click cut then it's just going to tell me exactly where it's cutting again and it just gives you a little time estimate of three minutes so I will click the start button and then I'm going to, I'm going fa to fast forward everything and it will just do its little cutting motion. I am going to what I call babysit the machine. I do not like to walk away when it is cutting. Just in case something shifts, I want to be right here to fix an issue if there is an issue. So all I have to do now is press start. It's already cut out two images and it's been seconds. So then I will select OK. By the way, this is touchscreen. It comes with a stylus. I only really like to use the stylus when I'm not filming for getting that precision, precision box around everything, but it is touchscreen as well. So I'm done with this. Once I take this off, I'm, I don't have another paper with the stamps put in the exact same spot, but if you're going to be printing off something and having multiple copies, I still recommend scanning everything each time you do a new sheet of paper. So I'm not going to save this at all onto my machine. It's just wasted data. So I will just select the home button. It says, do you want to delete all the patterns you just scanned? Yes, I do. All right. Now to remove this, you cannot just pull it out without the machine being unhappy. 
So I'm going to press this button, which is the load unload, and just let my hand move over so it can unload by itself, like so. Then my favorite part is taking everything off of the sheets. You're gonna need a lot of room if you use a scanning cut. When I was in my craft room before I moved down into my current room, I had to take everything downstairs to the kitchen because I needed a big surface to get it all up. Okay, so well, I'm gonna keep it on here because I'm gonna use this for storage. Oh no, it's not, I did not cut through enough. Ugh, well. Learning opportunity. So I realized that when I messed with my blade showing <laughs> The different levels I had my blade too shallow so I'm going to now use the machine to cut this I'm going to adjust my blade to make sure it is nice and deep so it's actually going to cut the paper much better than it was before put that back in okay well, we'll just do the whole process all over again. Isn't that just how it is sometimes? Okay, well, show the process twice. So I set it up there and then hit the load button. <laughs> this boy in some teacups. Okay, scan. Get my light ready to go. Once again, I'm going to be direct cutting to the machine, start. Hit okay, always switch it to four, okay. I'm going to make sure that my Whoa, my stylus just went flying across the room. <laughs> okay, there it is. So now you might be able to see this one flower, it's going to cut really weird. And that's fine with me. I don't know why it does that for some flowers and not the other. This is literally the same stamp. I don't know, but it's fine. And that's honestly probably for the best because then I can show you what that looks like once it is cut. So... All right, I'm just gonna double check that that four, yes, and click okay. Cut, and start. I'll click okay, unload. Yes, I know my designs will be deleted. Okay, now it's the best time to show them all cut out. It's so exciting. Look at that. Just peeled right off. So you can see, yeah, that rose, she didn't make it. R.I.P. <laughs> I will then take these off. And now I'm ready to color these beautiful stamped images and make some cards and maybe some tags that simple I really do like the scan and cut machine it's an investment for sure but I've used it for years now and it's been very helpful especially for cutting out stamps like I said it can do a whole bunch of other stuff so and there's probably videos online you can find but I figured I would just show this to you since someone asked for a video so you can see they cut out super nicely Hooray. Okay, well what I'm going to do with the sheet that did not cut because I had my blade placed weird is I'm going to try this again. Don't mind my sweatshirt sleeves. <laughs> it is gorgeous in Minnesota right now. It is 61 degrees outside and tomorrow will be 80. This is a hot fall. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to just try it again. I've never had this happen before, so I don't know. This might be a total flop. And I'm okay to risk this paper and the time it will take to restamp everything because I'm a curious crafter and I want to know if this is going to work. 
with changing my blade and having it semi pre-cut. I don't know. We'll see if this works. If it doesn't, it's a learning experience. <laughs> Do not be afraid to try things in your craft room that could just flop because I give you permission to. <laughs> All right, we're going to do this again. I'm going to load it in. Sometimes, by the way, it doesn't load straight. I will demonstrate that. So if that happens to you, do not worry. Well, that's really crooked. Usually it gives you a little error message. Here, ready? See? It's mad at me. <laughs> Put it in straight. <laughs> All right, let's scan. Direct cut. Save to the machine. Get my light ready. And start. See, look what it did to my pumpkin head now. It's got crazy little cuts there. Well, I might have to sacrifice my pumpkin man for the rest of these to be cut out. That's kind of just gonna have to be okay. So I will just arrange that so it is around what I want. If I wanted to, I could move this over, have it just cut some things, but it will cut that, this like this one, it will cut that one out and not go around if I have the screen like that. So, sorry, pumpkin head, you are going to be sacrificed. <laughs> Quite on brand for him. Okay, number four. All right, everything's looking good. Definitely want to babysit this since it has the pre cuts. So we'll see if this works. Cut and start. Fingers crossed it works. I will tell. So far so good. I've got my head under here and I'm looking. Ah! See this little guy moved. I'm just gonna move it out of the way so it's not in the way of the blade. If my mat was sticky, that would have stayed on. Oh well. <laughs> this is why you have to babysit your craft supplies. If things go awry, I can always hit the stop button. though, but we'll see. does a little bit here and a little bit there is it works on an X Y plane so <laughs> may 
math. We'll just leave it like that. It's math. Just know it cuts. No! Not again. Ha! Huh. Okay, I think it worked. Hit OK. And unload. Yes, I want to delete it. Fingers crossed. Yay! They're already flying everywhere. Oh, yay. I wish these were real bingo cards. I would love to go play bingo today. Although, it's kind of too nice to be inside. Which is why I always keep this open when I'm crafting if I can, because... Fresh air! Oh, no! Sad pumpkin head. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I love the pumpkin head, but he had to go. So these ones could be cut. Anyway, this, <laughs> this has been your video for how to use a scanning cut. I hope this helped. If you were curious, it is an expensive machine. I'm not going to tell you to buy anything at all. But if you're wondering how it worked, or if you have one and you haven't used it and you forgot how to use it, or whatever, here's your video. <laughs> and I hope that you come back to my channel I will be using these stamps and making projects with them cards and maybe some gift tags so I will see you in my next video be sure to like and subscribe before you head out thanks for watching bye bye